Now that we have a good understanding of the forced convection heat transfer over a flat plate, let us extend this analysis and study certain other external flows. The first configuration we will be looking at is that of a circular cylinder in a closed flow, as shown here. Due to the ease of manufacturing, circular pipes are widely used as a part of tube banks in heat exchangers. Before we discuss about the heat transfer for this case, let us quickly recap the related fluid dynamic concepts. As the fluid flow hits the cylinder, it comes to a complete stop at a location referred to as the stagnation point. At this location, the velocity of the flow is zero and consequently, according to the Bernoulli's principle, the pressure is maximum. Due to a favorable pressure gradient, the flow starts to accelerate and a boundary layer begins to form on the wall as the flow turns around the cylinder. At a certain circumferential location where dp dx is equal to zero, maximum flow velocity is reached. Beyond this point, because of an adverse pressure gradient, that is, dp dx greater than zero, the flow starts to decelerate. At a further circumferential location, the flow momentum is not strong enough to overcome the adverse pressure gradient. As a result, the boundary layer detaches from the surface of the cylinder at a location called the separation point. The circumferential location of this separation point is strongly influenced by the nature of the boundary layer. Now, let's define a Reynolds number based on the diameter of the cylinder. Experiments show that the boundary layer is laminar for a Reynolds number less than 200,000 and the separation point is around theta is equal to 80 degrees. For Reynolds number greater than 200,000, when the boundary layer becomes turbulent, flow separation is delayed due to enhanced fluid momentum that withstands the adverse pressure gradient for longer and as a result, the separation location is around theta is equal to 140 degrees. The convection heat transfer levels are also significantly influenced by the nature of the boundary layer. For Reynolds numbers less than 100,000, where the boundary layer is entirely laminar, the local nozzle number decreases with increasing circumferential angle as seen in this plot. Close to the separation location, that is around theta is equal to 80 degrees, the nozzle number attains its minimum value. However, due to enhanced mixing from the vortices in the separated flow, the nozzle number starts to increase. This situation is slightly different for Reynolds number greater than 100,000. Initially, the nozzle number profile still shows a decreasing trend till about theta of 80 degrees. Between 80 and 100 degrees, however, a sharp increase in heat transfer levels is ob observed, which is due to the laminar turbulent transition. Beyond theta is equal to 100 degrees, the profile once again shows a decreasing trend till the separation location, after which it again increases because of enhanced mixing. For low Reynolds number flows, that is, Reynolds number less than 2000, and for a Prandtl number greater than 0.6, one can use the following correlation to calculate the local nozzle number at the stagnation location. Different researchers have proposed correlations which are valid for specific situations to calculate the average nozzle number. The most frequently used ones are proposed by Hilpert, Zukakis, and Churchill and are plotted here on this graph. Let us now look at a different case, flow across a tube bank. A tube bank is a set or collection of tubes carrying a cold or hot fluid. 
These are commonly seen in devices such as heat exchangers where a second hot or cold fluid is passed over the tube bank to add or remove heat from the fluid inside the tubes. These tubes can be arranged either in an aligned or staggered form. In the aligned arrangement, successive rows are longitudinally displaced from each other as shown here. In a staggered arrangement, however, in addition to the longitudinal offset, the tubes are also offset in the transverse direction as illustrated in this figure. For the first row of both the arrangements, the flow is equivalent to that of a cross flow over a single cylinder which we looked at earlier. However, if the cylinders of the same row are very close to each other, they can influence the separation patterns of the adjacent cylinders and therefore the heat transfer levels. In the aligned arrangement, as the flow passes over the tube rows, its turbulent character increases and consequently, the downstream tube rows exhibit higher convection coefficients than the previous ones. However, this behavior does not go on indefinitely and instead saturates around the fifth tube row beyond which the heat transfer coefficients remain relatively constant. If the longitudinal offset of rows is small compared to the lateral distance between the cylinders, the downstream rows can be entirely shielded from the flow by the upstream rows and the heat transfer levels are then substantially reduced. This issue is not as pronounced in the staggered arrangement. Grimson proposed the following correlation to calculate the average Nusselt number for both the arrangements. Here, the constants C1 and M are dependent on the type of tube arrangement and the longitudinal and lateral distances between the cylinders of the rows. This formula can be extended to any fluid and to tube bundles with less than 10 rows using the following correlation. The variable Vmax can be calculated from the mass conservation principles and varies with the type of tube arrangement. Let us now shift gears and look at a different type of external flow, an impinging jet flow. When a fast moving fluid exhausting from a nozzle or pipe impinges on a solid surface, it is called an impinging jet flow. An illustration of such a flow is shown here. These types of flows are used to achieve enhanced heat transfer rates in applications such as milling, glass tempering, de-icing of aircrafts and other applications. The entire flow field of an impinging jet configuration can be broadly classified into three zones. Free jet zone is a region in which the effect of the surface is not felt by the fluid flow. Stagnation or impingement zone is a region which is significantly influenced by the surface. Before impinging on the surface, the flow is decelerated in the wall normal direction and closer to the plate, the flow is forced to change direction. At impingement, a stagnation point with zero velocity exists where the jet hits the surface. From this point on, the linear momentum of the jet is transformed into a horizontal acceleration. The wall jet zone is the region in which the local flow takes the form of a wall jet. The accelerating horizontal flow in the stagnation zone starts to entrain fluid from the surrounding and spreads radially outward to take the form of a wall jet. Most configurations of impinging jets used for heating or cooling applications have multiple jet arrays. Due to an interaction of adjoining jets, secondary stagnation zones can also be formed. Once the fluid from the jet extracts or imparts the heat from or to the surface 
and can no longer be used for heat transfer purposes, this fluid is generally referred to as the spent gas. The overall heat transfer from or to the surface strongly depends on how the spent gas is vented from the system. For the configurations shown here, if the spent gas can escape through the vents between the nozzles, equivalent local and average values of convection coefficients exist in close proximity, that is the dotted region of the nozzle. The plot here shows the nozzle number distribution along the plate starting with the stagnation point. When the distance between the nozzle exit and the surface is large, that is H over D is greater than 5, the heat transfer is maximum at the stagnation point and decreases with the lateral distance along the plate. Due to the rise in turbulence level associated with the transformation of accelerating stagnation region flow to a wall jet, for smaller separations, the nozzle number distribution exhibits a second maximum as shown in the plot here. For jet arrays, interaction of adjoining jets also results in secondary maxima. For such configurations, the heat transfer distribution is 2D which means that the variations of heat transfer coefficient can be observed in both directions parallel to the surface. Different correlations exist depending on the nozzle geometry and whether the configuration is a single nozzle or an array of nozzles. The parameters that appear in these correlations such as the nozzle exit area, nozzle plate separation distance and the Reynolds number have a specific range over which the correlations are valid. With that, let's wrap up this lesson.